Now we're going to have a look at cane pepper. This is my travelling pack. I take cane pepper everywhere with me. Cane pepper is a remarkable herb. Cane pepper is not chilli. Chilli comes from the chilli family and cane pepper comes from the capsicum family. Chilli is an irritant to the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Black pepper is an irritant to the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. But cane pepper will heal a stomach ulcer. Cane pepper moves blood. It's one of the best circulatory stimulants there is. It's not a nervous system stimulant like your caffeines or your tobacco. It's a blood stimulant. And when you consider that the life of the flesh is in the blood, cayenne pepper is a wonderful healer. And you can put cayenne pepper with any other herb and it'll intensify its action. So let's begin by looking at how you can use cayenne pepper internally. By the way, how would you take it? Well, a medicinal dose may be a quarter of a teaspoon in a little bit of water and throw it down. Won't it burn? Well, I prefer to call it tingle. <laughs> It might feel like it's burning, but it will never burn. I have a book at home by Jethro Kloss called Back to Eden. He devotes half a page to every herb except for cane pepper. Ten pages he devotes to cane pepper. It's a remarkable herb. And I think I mentioned this the other night. You can get an e-book. It's called Curing with Cain by Sam Beiser. And you can download that book. The whole book is on cane pepper. It's a remarkable herb. So let's have a look at internally. Internally, it'll heal a stomach ulcer because what the cane does, it causes a constriction of any open blood vessels. So just for a moment, let's look at externally. If you have a cut, cut, you pour cane pepper into it and it'll stop the bleeding. Now we had a Fijian doctor come over and work with me for a couple of weeks. She wanted to look at what we did. Do you know she works in Suva now and her name is the uh, nutritional doctor. She, she works all with natural medicines. But let's back to, to uh, Misty Mountain. I'm giving a lecture and I heard a crash in the kitchen but I just kept lecturing as I always do. Like when the little girl does ballerinas there, I just keep lecturing. I just keep lecturing. Yes, the building might fall down and I just might keep lecturing. That's my job, <laughs> just keep lecturing. I was in the Bronx, New York lecturing one day and behind everyone, a policeman came in with his gun drawn. I just kept lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> he went out again. <laughs> so the good news, we're gonna keep going. Anyway, um, where was I? Where was I? Misty Mountain, and we've got the doctor. Crash in the kitchen. Found out later the blender had dropped, and she had bare foot, feet as Fijians do. And you know how thick blenders are? Three bits of glass had gone on the top of her foot, and she had three one centimetre long cuts on the top of her feet. And the staff were saying, Barbara, Barbara, quick. So I went outside, and just like most Fijians, she's laughing. <laughs> and I looked at her foot, and I could see little globules of fat. How deep is that? That's very deep. I said, don't worry about it. We'll fix it. So I went and got the cayenne pepper, and I sprinkled cayenne pepper in it. Anyway, she laughed the louder, as Fijians do. Most others would have screamed. <laughs> Doesn't it hurt? Well, it's already hurting. So it just hurts a little bit more. <laughs> and only hurts momentarily. It's like when you put cayenne pepper in your mouth, it, it, the tingle dies down. And then we bound it up. Well, I saw her the next day and she said, I can't believe this. She said, I would have stitched that. She said, if I'd been near a hospital, she said, I would have stitched that. But she said, this has drawn it together. She said, all the swelling has gone down. She said, it's unbelievable. So you see, her experiences with, at Misty, maybe that one, <laughs> was very helpful on her knowing how to treat. And that's what Cain will do. My son William, when he was about 10, he was clearing away the banana, the, the cut banana. You know how bananas, you'll get the old ones? And the eldest son was cutting them with a machete. 
and William thought Peter had finished that area and he came in just as the knife came down and cut across the fingers. In fact, the other son was looking through the grass for the fingers, but it was all right, they were still there. <laughs> anyway, I was in the meeting at a time. I looked up and saw Peter saying, Mom, and I said to my daughter, go, go and see what's wrong with Pete. And then they were all gone. Well, I finished the meeting and went up to the house half an hour later, and there's William with cane pepper all over. The kids had put the cane pepper on it. <laughs> and he was sitting there with a frozen juice ice block. That had made him happy. <laughs> Do you know that it should have been stitched probably? Well, I wouldn't have stitched it, but I'd say most people would have thought it, it should have been stitched, but it healed very nicely. Now, this little finger was bent for a while, so what did he cut through? A tendon. Now, when my brother-in-law saw that, he was not very happy because he felt I should have had it stitched. But I thought, well, it's his left hand and it's the third finger, so what does it matter if it's a bit bent? Do you know how you sort of got to... And what would happen if he went to hospital? They would have insisted on tetanus. They would have insisted on, you know... The, uh, how are they going to find that time? I thought, no, it'll be right. So what I did was every time we were sitting in church or sitting in a car, I'd just rub it. I'd just rub it. And I found within a few weeks it was working again. <laughs> See, hey, you've, you've, got to, you've got to weigh up. What, 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 is this really important? <laughs> and as I said, if I broke my arm and my bones were sticking out, I'd be very thankful for a doctor to... <laughs> perform an operation to get my arm working again but there are lots of little tiny bits and pieces that the natural remedies will fix so any cut put the cane pepper on it yes it will hurt but it's already hurting and remember it'll settle down and then bind it up because it'll constrict the blood vessels and cause them to shut now internally if there's a bleeding ulcer and you take cane pepper won't it hurt it'll give a little bit of a tingle but it will never hurt meaning it will never cause an ulcer. In the book Jethro Kloss, there's a doctor that says it's impossible to cause a lesion with cayenne pepper. Another doctor said you cannot abuse cayenne pepper. It's impossible to abuse it. It's actually a very safe herb. It will never harm. It might feel like it sometimes, <laughs> but it will never harm. You can also use it internally if someone has a heart attack. Now I had read about this, but I experienced it once and it was when we had our health retreat in Melbourne. I got a call from one of the staff, a lady's had a heart attack in the middle of a cooking class. So I ran down, I was there in three minutes, the lady's lying on the ground, her face is white, there's a guy holding a pulse, he said, the pulse is gone, almost. I said, quick cane pepper, I got a half a teaspoon on a of cane pepper, quickly put it in her mouth. She was half conscious, we're able to give her a little bit of water to, to drink. Within two minutes, the guy holding the pulse said, the pulse is strong. All the color came back into her cheeks and she sat up and said, what happened? <laughs> Just amazing, we sold out of cane pepper that program. <laughs> Everyone, what happened to that lady? What happened to that lady is, that that cane pepper, when it got into the blood vessels, it thinned the blood. This is the best blood thinner. No need to woofrin, for woofrin, I mean rat poison. Hmm? No need for aspirin. And by the way, it has been shown today that aspirin causes brain bleeds. This is very, very safe with no side effects. Now, if someone is on warfarin or aspirin and they're a little concerned, I would suggest start taking a quarter of a teaspoon three times a day. And most people, if they're on warfarin, they have to be tested, yeah, every few weeks or every month. And the doctor will say, your blood's getting so thin, we can reduce your medication. Mm-hmm. Because he will see it if you're taking cayenne pepper. It's very safe. There are... I was going to say many doctors, probably 1% of doctors, there are a few that, that are using natural medicines with amazing results. See, there's no side effect with this. You could take a bucket of that a day and you would still not bleed to death. Mm -hmm. Because, remember herbs, 
Psalm 104, verse 14, God made herbs for the service of man. They work with the body. Now, what that did when this lady took it, it thinned the blood, it immediately opened, dilated all her blood vessels and she got a dramatic delivery of blood all through her body and that's what pulled her around. Isn't that amazing? If you've got a stomach ulcer, it'll constrict the bleeding vessels. If you need to open the arteries, it'll just open that. That's how the herbs work with the body. You can also use cayenne pepper to wake up areas of the body that may be sleeping. Now, we have had a few people come to our program who've got peripheral neuropathy. That means they've lost the feeling in their feet. And this is one of the side effects of chemotherapy. So we've had a few people come who have lost the feeling in their feet. And it can also be used when people get commonly uh, cold feet. You must never allow your feet to get cold because perfect health requires perfect circulation. And perfect circulation means that your feet are the same as the rest of your body, the same temperature. I used to get cold feet a lot until I, until I started exercising. You see, exercise is the best cure for poor circulation, especially that interval training. But we have had many people come with cold feet. We've had a few people come with peripheral neuropathy. They've lost the feelings in their extremities. Now, if someone's lost the feelings in their extremities, you can never do hot and cold foot treatments on them. You put cold feet into really hot water, you can damage the tissues. So you have to be very cautious with that. But you can put a cane pepper compress on the bottom of the feet. Now what I usually do, now you see what I've done here, I've got a piece of glad wrap and I've got kitchen paper that's been folded over. I'm going to put a light sprinkle of oil on that and then I'm going to sprinkle about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper on that. And what the person does, they put their foot straight on the cayenne pepper, wrap the glad wrap round, put it in a sock and keep it on all night. And by morning, their feet are warm and their feet stay warm. <coughs> I had one man who'd lost all feeling in his feet and on the second night he got pins and needles in his feet. What's pins and needles? That's the first sign that life's coming back in the feet. You see, it's very, very gentle. So usually I put olive oil and I haven't got olive oil so I'm just going to do a little bit of castor oil here. So just a little, a little smear of olive oil oil or castor oil, just enough to, uh, so that the uh, cane pepper will stick. And now I just spread that over so it's spread out. And I have put a little bit too much on there, but that will be just enough for the other foot. So I'm just going to put another one on so that, to mop it up because it's, oh yes. So I've easily got enough for two feet here. And most of us have got two feet, yes. And now I'm going to sprinkle the cayenne pepper on. So the oil is just so that the cayenne pepper sticks to it. Because if you didn't put the oil on, of course, the cayenne pepper would just all fall off. Now this is about how much I put on. So you see that? and then the foot goes on that. It will not burn the foot. If I put that on my foot, and we're not going to do it in this weather, because we're warm enough anyway, but if I put that on my foot, by about four in the morning, I'm waking up wanting to take them off. My feet are getting so hot. But if someone has cold feet, by morning their feet are just getting warm. If someone has no feeling in their feet, sometimes it will take two nights before it will come. Now, if, so, if you put it on your feet every night, you're going to want to sit with your feet in ice water all day long because your feet will get too hot. So what I usually suggest, if someone has cold feet, do it about every three nights until their feet stay warm. And if someone has no feeling in their feet, even then I would probably only do it every two nights. And of course, you wait for your result. You would stop if the person has full feeling in their feet and their feet feel like they're on fire the whole time, then you would stop. So you watch, 
you watch the body's response. But it's very, very safe. <laughs> That's very, very safe compress. And it can bring feeling in defeat that nothing else will do. Remember what cayenne pepper does? What I like to do is I like to understand what the actives are in the herb and then you know to apply it. And it's number one most important active is it moves blood. So it's going to pull blood to the area when you've got that on the bottom of the feet. So when you take it off in the morning, you just wipe it with a, a wet washer, dry it and um, put your shoes and socks on. Now, very important to keep your feet warm. We're coming into winter. Don't let your feet get cold because cold feet drives cool blood back to the extremities, which can be, can be very bad for the health of your internal organs. You can also wake up a thyroid gland. So underactive thyroid gland, you see, underactive thyroid gland, you can put a cane pepper poultice on that or compress. And what you would do is you would just do one about this size because your thyroid gland is about there. And then you would put it on for a few hours. Now we had a lady who was so excited about this because she had an underactive thyroid. She was on medication. Today, she is on no medication. It took a bit of work, but eventually she got off her medication. And that's quite a surprise to most people because most people think if they're on the thyroid medication, they're on it for the rest of their life. Her doctor took her off because all her levels became normal because of everything else she was doing. So she put it on and went to bed and she didn't sleep all night because that woke her thyroid gland up so much she became <laughs> active all night. So message from this is don't put it on before you go to bed. So after that, we started putting it on just in the morning while I was doing the lecture while she was with us. And she said that after about half an hour, it got really, really hot and then it would settle down a little bit. So can you see what's happening is blood is being drawing into that thyroid gland to wake it up. Remember what blood is? It's the life of the flesh. If someone's got an overactive thyroid gland, students, what would you put on the thyroid gland to slow it down? Ice. <laughs> That's so simple, isn't it? It's so simple. But one thing that really can help the thyroid gland to control or balance out is high intensity exercise. High intensity exercise wakes up that thyroid gland. Often thyroid glands, whether it be under or overactive, are iodine deficient. And you can do a very simple iodine test. You can get iodine from the chemist and you paint it, say, on the inside of your arm and you'll get a brown smudge. And then you just observe how long it's there for. If that iodine disappears within an hour, you've got low iodine. Well, how do you get your iodine up? You just put it on every day until it stays there. It should be there for about five hours. That's a very simple one, isn't it? And your thyroid's main food is iodine. And earlier in the week, Actually, it was yesterday, last night, I said that mercury gobbles up your selenium and your thyroid gland needs selenium to convert iodine into thyroxine. And so getting that mercury fillings out is also important. You only need five Brazil nuts a day to supply all the iodine that you need.